Hey everybody, come on inside the Cube After Dark. We're here at Lamar, on the pier, part of RSA. We're here with NYSE, Intel, Intel Capital, Elastic, and Open Policy. The Cube is sponsoring this amazing cocktail party. El Adel Schulman is here, he's the CEO of Lasso Security. If you couldn't tell by the hat. <laughs> Hello, thanks for coming on the Cube. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so why did you start the company? So basically, I'm a, I'm a cyber veteran, uh, and I was semi-retired. I sold my company in 2020, and in 2022, I started playing with Gen AI with my own hands, got back to coding, and I thought that cyber is going to be a new problem in this world, and I like challenges, and I want to build a big company to solve the problems of generative AI security. So I reached out to former employees of mine that I invested in. They were doing something else, and I told them, let's go and build cybersecurity for generative AI for LLMs together, and this is why we found it last time. Amazing. You you sold your company to Mimecast. Correct. Right? correct. Okay. Yeah. So now you, you're a young man. You now <laughs> you're saying, okay, what's next? You know, continue to solve solve problems. Explain the problem that Lasso solves. So uh, generative AI introduces a new way of interacting with AI. It's a conversational, unstructured, situational interactions, and basically breaks the entire cybersecurity models today. And you need to build kind of like a new operating system for cybersecurity, where you need to handle these new attacks like jailbreaks and prompt injection, data leaks. So the interaction going to the model and going back from the model is something that requires new solutions. And this is why we're here to help organizations join the generative AI era, but in a secure, safe way. And basically we're an enabling technology for organizations. So a lot of people listening might say, well, doesn't the cloud solve that problem of LLM leakage, et cetera. Explain where you pick up where, say, a cloud provider like an Amazon or Azure or Google wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't cover that. Where do you, they leave off and you pick up? So they are protecting uh, how you access the internals of the model, the operating system, how do we make sure that these are secured. But once you're getting to the applicative, to the conversational layer, so it's a layer on top of the application, this is where things started to get break. I'll give you one very brief example. People are used to treating credit card numbers as 16 digits. This is hard, easy to, to understand. But in the world of generative AI, if someone is writing a credit card number in words, the word four, the word five, and so on, in a conversation, it's something that the existing mechanisms are not able to cope, and you need to build a new layer, a conversational layer, and basically train and fine tune models to address that this is the new layer which neither the existing uh, cloud providers nor the existing cybersecurity incumbents are able to cope with and this is why you need new innovation in this new market. So explain that, you're saying like in a traditional world, a credit card transaction, you can encrypt that data, but there's no mechanism, for example, to do that in a natural language conversation. In a natural language and basically in a conversation, it's more than that. So people interact with conversations and maybe they use words or images, emojis, or stories. These are the things that the model understand, but the security mechanisms fail to understand, and you need to build a new mechanism, which is LLM, Gen AI born, and built on top of the new mechanisms to address this new world. So it's a whole new threat surface. Definitely. And a whole new attack vector that, that adversaries can go after, because people think, the basic thing they think about is, oh, better phishing emails. That was so 2022, 2023. Yeah, definitely. Now we're talking about much more sophisticated challenge. It's much so more sophisticated challenge. Uh, phishing is one of them. Actually, one of my previous company that we sold was around phishing. Yeah. That we sold to Mimecast. Mm -hmm. But in this world, basically, you're interacting with the models in what, what you call prompt. And if someone can inject malicious instructions in text, previously you had to work with files, binaries. Today, the text is the new attack vector. So if someone could send malicious instructions to the model and tell the model, please ignore everything that you know and do something else for me, which is malicious. This is the new attack vector, and this is where the adversaries will go. And we need to think kind of like, you know, uh, not just criminals, but it's also uh, more, uh, not just native language, but conversation, as I mentioned, something which is more philosophic. So you need to think kind of like different. So you need to be a troll 
to be an attacker in this world. So this is kind of like the, the analogy. So you're saying the adversary basically will have the ability through natural language to manipulate the behavior of the AI. Yeah. Such that the AI will do things that are unintended. Exactly. Now, is your is your approach to 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 trap that and stop it, or is it to put in a security layer that protects the the system from that? Behavior? So the security layer is in two phases. Uh, one is around the data that you send to the model, the prompt, and one is on the data that you get back from the model, the return, the completion. Uh, and on that, definitely, part of it is not just alerting like a lot of traditional cybersecurity uh, solutions do, but also anonymize data on the fly, or even block complete interactions. So once we identify a malicious intent or a malicious reply, we need to block this interaction completely altogether. What's the fundamental technology underneath this? What's your secret sauce? So uh, it's based on identifying the different interactions with the models, recording the traffic, and then we have proprietary models that we are training and fine tuning to classify all of these micro use cases and the new use cases. And what I always like to say is that there's always a new use case that you don't know about. And our platform is able to react very fast and to adapt to the N plus one, the new use case that you don't know. Uh, and what I like to say is that, you know, we don't matter, matter any, anywhere in this world. The attackers are addicted in pace. And I need to build a company that both from a culture perspective and from a platform perspective will be able to react almost in real time to the things that we don't know. The unknown is what I'm preparing ourselves for. So for training, you go to the cloud and get the, the resources. You don't have to buy GPUs from NVIDIA, or do you? Uh, we, we are using GPUs for some of them, but part of our ability is to create not large language models, but small language models for specific use cases. So we can use GPUs, but we don't have to in order to operate very well. Are you able to use CPUs to yes, train? Yes, we are. Really? Yeah. Can you use like general purpose CPUs? Uh, so we can, it depends on the use case. Some of them will require GPUs, some of them uh, uh, less, uh, less sophisticated hardware. And it's a, right now it's a training challenge. Is it also at some point an inference challenge? Uh, it is both. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, it is both and we need to address both with the platform. And then, uh, how did you fund the company? Uh, is it self-funded? Do you have outside capital? No, we have outside capital. So last year, middle of last year, we had our, our seed round led by a firm called Entre Capital with participation of Samsung Net and a lot of angel investors from the industry. Recently, we added a, a couple of other uh, funds into the mix um, and, and soon more will join us. So where are you at? You're building out the product, testing it. Do you, do you have... You don't have product market fit yet, I uh, presume. We, uh, I wouldn't say that we have classic part of my favorite. We have a few, uh, a dozen deployments already with Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we already have paying customers, and we're tuning it. One of the challenges to say that we have really a product market fit is that uh, larger organizations are trying to understand what is their fit to this world, what are their use cases, and this is why we need to adapt some of the solutions to their use cases and their needs. But definitely, we're. we're we're getting close to product market fit. So, uh, as a successful entrepreneur, CEO, what do you look for as the determining factors when you know you've got product market fit? It's sort of art and science, I know, but because at that point you want to throw gas in the fire and scale go to market fit. So, how do you determine that as a CEO? So, for me, so the products we know that they are in the right direction but we need to see enough usage from Fortune 500 companies, and we have a few POCs of, POCs of them, to understand that the use cases that they need, we address them in a very good way, that we start expanding there, that they're starting to pay us significant cash. Once this will happen, we know that we need to put more gas into the fire, and we need to explode, and this is very close, actually. And it, it, the team is, is all based in, in Israel? You have a team here no, in the so US as well? Most of the team is in Israel. We have a few people here in the West Coast, uh, we have a few people in, in Europe, and we're starting to, to expand uh, both in Europe and in the U.S. Elad, I know it's a very difficult time for you and your colleagues and your friends and your family in Israel. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much. My you pleasure. Know, God Thanks bless for supporting you us. And, and all the community, and we wish you safe travels. Thank you very much. And safety for, for you and everybody uh, in Israel. All the innocent people in the, in the Middle East, we pray for. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you much, we really appreciate right, it. Best of luck Thanks to you. Thanks everyone. My Congratulations pleasure. on all your success. Thank you very all much. Right. Okay, keep it right here. The Cube after dark, we're going wall to wall here at Lamar, at the pier.
My name is Dave Vellante. We'll be right back right after this short break.